Hello everyone. Okay, this video is going to be a little different, just kind of me talking of what comes to my mind. And the reason I wanted to make it is to encourage you all, um, to encourage us, the body of Christ, in how we can be a light in this time of darkness, what's going on with the coronavirus, um, what our government is doing, those of us in the U.S., what our government is doing to try and regulate it and control some things of it. It's all very new for us and scary. And so many, so many people are afraid. Um, it's not even something you could single out and say, um especially those who don't know the Lord, because a lot of us who do know the Lord are afraid. And now, yeah, I've, I've got a, I made a video before talking about how you don't have to be afraid uh, with what's going on. And it's still true. God says we do not have to fear because he has got everything under control. And that's just kind of a thought that I had is, are people looking at what's going on in the world right now and saying, where's God? Or even worse, they're not considering God at all. They are looking at what's going on as if it is separate from God, as if God doesn't know about it, as if he isn't still the one in control. And God is certainly still the one in control. He has always been the one in control and he always will. And he knows exactly what's going on. He's omniscient. He knows everything about everything. And nothing can change that. And nothing. Nothing that we could do. Nothing that could happen in the world. Nothing can change those things about God. And so um, there is a lot of talk about the government trying to get everyone to stay home, and it hasn't, to my knowledge, it hasn't escalated very far as to um, the government sort of sending out police or the military forcing people to stay home, but uh, I can see echoes of that, and I hope it doesn't come to that ultimately, because I, yeah, I just, I just hope it doesn't come to that ultimately, but since everyone has been brought to their homes, everyone has been turned to stay, told to stay in their homes, and there's this isolation happening all around the world. And in my experience, when you're in fear, to be isolated is just going to add to that fear. I understand entirely the wisdom behind keeping germs from spreading because that is how we spread germs, person to person, but I don't want anyone out there to think because you have to stay in your home or because you're not supposed to meet with large groups of people or go to events or, uh, you know, just do life n normally. I don't want you to think that means you're alone because you're not. And yes, we're all facing this issue together as a country and as the world, but just because communication seems limited at first and being in contact with people seems like it's no longer an option doesn't mean it's true. I made a video, uh, my first video, giving my testimony of what Jesus did for me, how I came to him and all that, and I was suffering from agoraphobia for many years. And agoraphobia is the fear of going into public, essentially. You're afraid of leaving your home. So <laughs> I know exactly what the world is feeling right now. I've been there and it was so debilitating at first. And I did think I was alone and I would be forever alone. And of course, first I came to the knowledge of knowing that because I have God, because I have Jesus, I have the Holy Spirit, I'm never alone. But I 
I was able to um, sort of find the ways in which I could still be around people, I could still be involved in life to a different degree, to a lesser degree than what I wanted, but still, I didn't, I didn't stay isolated in that sense. There was a time I was, but it wasn't the entirety of the years that I suffered from agoraphobia. And so I just wanted to get on here and sort of share a little bit of that and some ideas that I have on how we can still fellowship during this time and how we can still be a testimony and shine the light in this darkness. Fear lives in darkness. Fear is everywhere. Darkness is everywhere. So we, the body of Christ, are told to shine our light in this darkness. So, yeah. I, when I say this statement, know that it's not um, out of pride or me trying to seem ignorant or that I don't understand how serious uh, the virus can be and how, um, how it is important that we take precautions and not get people sick and all that sort of thing. But I'm not afraid. I haven't felt... Since, you know, since this all started being broadcast to us, I haven't felt a moment of fear. I haven't felt like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? We're going to be doomed. We're all going to die. Um, we're alone. We need help. What's going to happen? I haven't felt any of those thoughts. I haven't thought any of those thoughts. I have had this peace in the midst of this chaos. And that peace is Jesus. And the Bible says in Philippians that Christ will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. And what that means is we will feel this peace and this calm and not be afraid in the midst of something like the coronavirus, this pandemic, and that you look around at the situation and you see everyone afraid and you understand the logic behind being afraid and that you you kind of sh maybe should be feeling scared but you're not you're at peace you're calm you don't feel anxious or worried because you know that you are protected by the Lord you are protected by the God of heaven and earth and that he will never leave you or forsake you. And that he is your provider. And you know that although you don't understand um, the mechanics of what's going on, how it's all going to turn out, what the ending will be, that it's okay because you know the one who does know. And you know the one who is in control of that. And you know that whatever happens out there, He's going to protect you under his wing. He's not going to let anything swallow you up and destroy you. He's, he is your shield. He's going to fortify you. He is going to make you feel peace and strength during this scary time. And all you have to do is come to him. Just continually be speaking to the Lord. Be praying without ceasing and... Ask Jesus for the peace, and he will give you the peace. And you'll look at it yourself and sort of say, I don't understand why I'm not afraid, but I'm not afraid. And ultimately, you do understand. It's because of Jesus. But again, when the whole world's going crazy, and everything is a mess, and it's just chaos, you can feel this peace. And yeah, so that part kind of covers... Um, if any of you out there are afraid, just go to God, talk to God, pour out your heart, tell him you're afraid, and he will tell you why you don't have to be afraid. And he will give you that peace that will keep you from fear. So, in regards to ways we can still let our light shine, ways we can still be a testimony, we live in this digital age where we have this miraculous thing called the internet and that's how I'm speaking to you right now. And we know 
we can instantly communicate with people from the complete other side of the world. And they didn't have any of this back when plagues were really ravaging the earth. Um, back when um, in World War I, they had the Spanish flu. And further back with all the plagues of the Middle Ages, they didn't have a way to reach out to someone and get someone to tell them it's going to be okay. Here's what you can do. Here's why you can feel peace. Here's how you get the peace. They didn't have anyone who could do that to them because they were just isolated to that small area they could reach. So God has given us the internet so that we can reach the world for him. And he, he expects us to. So um, in the video I posted before this one about prayer, I mentioned how through the social media platforms we can all get on the internet and post scripture and prayers and encourage everyone. And that is definitely a way that can make a huge impact for people. Um, even I think what you can do is share your personal feelings. And sort of as I said, you know, I see all this reason to be afraid and yet I'm not afraid. And God is there. God is in control. And don't let it seem cliche. Oh, God's in control. God's in control. No, God is in control. He is still here. He has not left us. He is completely aware of what's going on. And, but in a way, uh, other ways you can help sort of reach people on a more personal level is think about all your coworkers. Okay, so many of you have to work from home now and uh, you still have some contact through emails and phone calls, uh, you know, just making sure business is run. But consider, consider speaking to that coworker, not about business, but about the situation and invite them to lean on your shoulder, give them your ear, listen to them and say, hey, you want to talk about this? What's what's going on? Uh, what are you feeling? Are you okay? And then allow them to just feel safe with you so that they can share how scared they really are. And then you can be not only a witness to tell them why they don't have to be afraid, but you can be an example in action. You know, words are easy to say. Everyone can say words. But... The, to do the action behind the words, to actually practice what you preach, to really be an example of a pillar in this time that isn't afraid and is just, instead of focusing on yourself and how I can protect myself and what's going on, reach out to everyone else. Reach out to your coworkers and say, what can I do for you? I want you to know that you can talk to me. And the same goes for your neighbors. I know we are told we shouldn't be necessarily gathering in a large group and all, but you can go knock on your neighbor's door and say, hello, maybe introduce yourself for the first time. Maybe you've never even spoken to your neighbor and check on them. Let them know that you're here and you're watching their back and you can help them in any way that you can. And again, we don't, Sharing the gospel isn't necessarily always coming right at people with the story of Jesus. Sometimes it is opening that door, planting that seed, and being an example of what Jesus is and what Jesus does. Again, being a source of strength for others to lean on. And then they'll just sort of, you know, get to think about it and be like, what is it about Jim that keeps him so at peace during all this? Why, why, is, why isn't he afraid? And then that allows the opportunity for you to tell them the gospel, you know? But go to your neighbors. Go to your coworkers. Obviously, you're going to talk to your friends. Obviously, you're going to talk to your family. And that's great. You definitely have to take care of them, too. But extend 
extend your family, extend your neighbors to mean everyone you know. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. You don't have to send them a gift basket full of toilet paper and uh, canned goods. But just, again, let them know, hey, I'm here if you need to talk and I'll listen. You know, that can make such a huge difference to people, especially when they're afraid. Trust me. And then in other ways, you can um, do things that sort of uh, parallel normalcy. Um, you know, we can't do large gatherings right now, but you could do a group chat with people on, um, what is it, uh, Skype or FaceTime, uh, other video calling platforms, or a literal group chat through texting. And, you know, there are, <laughs> there are ways to occupy yourself and still be in contact with people, even though you're kind of stuck at your house. So, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what I was trying to get at here in this video, and I hope that I gave some good ideas, some good advice. Um, oh, another thing, um, if you have an extra Bible, seriously consider offering it to your neighbor, like your literal neighbor. And if you don't have an extra Bible, then maybe just, I don't know, type out or write down somehow, give them some scriptures for them to know they don't have to be afraid right now and that everything, we don't know how it's going to turn out, but we don't have to be afraid or trying to figure out how it's going to turn out in order to be safe. So yeah, anyways, sorry if this video is kind of rambly and all over the place. That is how I think usually. Um, anyways, I hope that you found it helpful and I really, really, really hope that you try one of my suggestions and even better come up with suggestions of your own and just do what you can and realize you are still capable of doing something. You are still capable of helping people even in this physically isolating situation. Thank you all for watching and I pray that you all have the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understandings, guarding your heart and your minds through this time.